down with this to get happy. Right. Recorder on? Yep. Okay, if you could uh, state your name for me, please. Aaron Foster. All right, Aaron, thanks for being here. Appreciate you doing this, man. No problem. So, Aaron, which uh, comedy room or comedy club did you start at in Chicago? Uh, also, when did you start? What year? What did you start at, and how was that experience? Okay. Uh, when I got back into college, my best friend's name was Patrick uh, Crisp. He was the DJ at this club called All Jokes Aside. That club is, was owned by Mary Lindsay and Raymond Lambert and another brother who, uh, his name is James Alexander. Good, good trio. As the DJ... I thought at first, man, comics are corny, man. Forget this, because I was an actual true DJ. But as I sat back there and watched cats like Jamie Foxx come through, I saw uh, D.L. Hughley come through consistently. Um, you know, all these big names. Uh, Steve Harvey was one of the main guys. Everybody but Bernie Mac, because he had his own club, and they had a little rivalry. I fell in love with this awful chick that we call comedy. Um, and that is, uh, was probably the worst thing I ever did in my life. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, sometimes I wish I didn't love her, but, you know, she's very good to me when she's good to me. So. So, yeah, can you name, um, some of the rooms that you worked that weren't, um, what they consider mainstream comedy clubs, like Zanies and, and, you know, uh, you know, the improv, uh, maybe you did work the improv at the funny firm. Uh, yeah. Can you name some of the clubs that you work, whether it be South Side or North Side? Absolutely. I wasn't around early enough for the funny firm, but I've, I'm on the wall at Zany's. I've produced and performed at the improv Laugh Factory. I was very, imp uh, I was a big part of them growing in Chicago. The, the places where I know that were all black were like the Roberts 500 Room, the Co uh, Cotton Club, um, Dejois. They also had the comedy at the click. Then we had underground small rooms that people didn't really uh, know about that weren't out in Chicago or that weren't comics like uh, the Comedy Hook, which is, was one of Damon's rooms. Um, and, and, and little small rooms like that, man. Uh, not until Jokes and Notes popped up after all Jokes Aside closed did black people in Chicago have a solid format or a solid club to perform at where we could consistently go and get that attention and get that growth that we needed. You know. Can you tell me a little bit about uh, a Mary at uh, Jokes and Notes and your experiences with Mary? Well, there's a Mary, there's a, a Mary at Jokes and Notes, and there's a Mary at All Jokes Aside. Mary at All Jokes Aside, if people know her history, she was like on the floor, she was like one of the few women who did stocks on the floor. So she was aggressive, she wasn't cowering to nobody, she controlled the building when she was in it. You know, um, some things went on where the club closed and she went on her life for maybe two years and then opened up jokes and notes. The Mary that is at Jokes and Notes is a little bit more mature, a little bit less ain't, uh, passive. I won't call her angry because she's always been a good woman, but she controls Jokes and Notes with a firm hand, but not as firm as uh, All Jokes Aside. But she's still, you know, we love her. She's the queen of Chicago uh, black comedy, you know, so there's nothing bad I can say about her, man. Have you ever, uh, <coughs> I work with her, she's a great person and very funny. Have you ever worked with like Adele Givens? I was around Adele Givens. Um, I think she might have been before my time, man. Okay, yeah. and can you maybe name, uh, have you worked with D Ray? Or any yeah, D Ray, I was around. D Ray, D -Ray used to do the, uh, actually, D Ray saved the, the uh, comedy club Riddles. Because Riddles was so far out, and the comedy on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday wasn't booking anybody. They have a two people in the audience, five people in the audience. Well, D. Ray, uh, who was a mastermind at marketing as well as um, contracts, signed a contract with Riddles on Sunday and brought the black community out there. He had three shows every Sunday, started paying their bills. Um, that mess kind of got a little messy with the owner because he kind of got jealous. D-Ray set it up so he had a door deal. First cat I ever heard of getting a door deal. So he walking out of there with after paying cats like, you know, that are big dudes now, 
uh, after paying them like 25,000, you know, he walked out of there with like 25, 30 grand that Sunday. You know what I'm saying? So his life blew up. He started traveling places and, uh, you know, and, and being able to perform everywhere, man. The dude was actually a pretty, a, a pretty smart guy, you know. Um, yeah, you know, so. So I've also asked this, this question about um, the difficulty for some black and African-American and maybe other minorities, even women yeah. sometimes, uh, getting work at uh, mainstream comedy clubs here in Chicago over the years as opposed, and also, you know, nationwide, and, and what your views are on that, and what do you think can do to stop that? Okay. Well, I've actually almost maybe have stumbled my career fighting that fight. Um, I know me and Bert, who was the um, booker for Zanies, we've had a lot of little slight battles. A lot of them are online through email, and not necessarily malicious battles, but what was interesting about my relationship with him is he will book me or was booking me for a little while until I started having my own company where I book myself, uh, which is cstandup.com. Um, he only had maybe one or two black dudes that he was booked. His favorite two for, I think, Shay Shay was one for a little while. Then he got Ralphie and then he got, you know, Cat. So it was like maybe two besides famous dudes. So we're talking local comics. Um, what's interesting is, is at the time, he didn't follow the same format that he has now. And we battled over that. And I must have brainwashed him or something because he's using it. Now he has a house host, which he used to never have. Now he's not so worried about the first comic not being as funny as the second comic and the third comic. He's booking a mixture now, which I, I, I secretly like to pride myself on that. But that has a lot to do with, with black comics not being able to get in. Because a lot of the black comics that had the guts to come over there, the zanies, were strong comics. And he didn't want to put them in front of other dudes. In fact, I know one comic named Ralphie that got in trouble with another comic because he was giving the dude the flux as a, as a feature. And the dude was like, hey, man, I don't want you to do X, Y, and Z joke because basically the dude couldn't follow it. That's what it was, man. Do you have any uh, good stories involving you or Chicago comedians? Oh, of course, man. I've been, uh, I've been the eyes in the back of the room as well as it. I got a great one about Dion Cole, all right? Dion Cole, one of the funniest dudes on earth. Uh, Dennis Rodman had a comedy club, and this other comedian named B. Cole, was the was the uh, was the host of the comedy club? Dion was the headliner. I was the feature. Dion at that day, man, this dude had drank too much that day. Went over to the bar, leaned on the bar, and had a, 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 a one of those sweaters on with a lot of little fur on it. Dude, arm caught on fire, man. J <laughs> the bartender jumps over the the, the bar throws a bucket of water on Dion's arm. The dude didn't even see himself on fire. You know what I'm saying? That's how drunk he was, you know what I mean? But that's one. Uh, the other one, same club. Rodman had his club. B. Cole, it was, uh, he, he had told everybody he got this special guest. Everybody, hush, hush, called me up. Hey, man, Prince is coming to the club. Don't tell nobody. So I'm excited because I ain't never been there and met Prince, you know what I mean? That's not going to say nothing. Throughout the whole night, the, the rumors start passing around, and this dude gets out of a limo, goes upstairs. The owner runs with two bottles of this expensive champagne, gives them to the dude, everything. Turns out that it was a Prince impersonator, man. Everybody was pissed. But... The dude was good. His name was Julian Rye, uh, Rides or something like that. Man, the dude was a good, good performer. But man, I, I, I was, I'm still hurt that I didn't get to meet Prince. All right, thanks. That's funny.